together as one to sing your praise Jesus we desire to seek your face hearts united undivided our praise is breaking through God we can see that you're moving
maganda at mapagpalang hapon po sa ating lahat. Purihin po ang Panginoon at sama-sama na naman po tayong magpupuri sa ating Diyos na buhay. Paalala lang po na meron po tayong communion sa linggong ito, kaya ihanda po natin ang ating mga communion emblems kung hindi pa po natin ito nagagawa. Sama-sama po natin i-welcome ang presensya ng Panginoon sa pamagitan po ng pagbasa ng kanyang mga salita na matatagpuan sa mga awit 95 verse 6. Tayo na lumapit sa kanyay sumamba at magbigay galang. Lumuhod sa harap ni Yahweh na siyang sa ating may lalang. Siya ang ating Diyos at tayo ang bayan sa kanyang pastulan. Mga tupang kanyang inaalagaan. Tayo po ay manalangin. Hallelujah! Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat po sa buong isang linggong nagdaan sa patuloy na pag-iingat at pagsama mo po sa bawat isa sa amin. O Diyos, sa pagsamba namin sa hapong ito, patuloy Panginoon na iparanas mo sa bawat isa sa, sa amin, Panginoon, ang presensya mo po, O God. Lord, dalangin po namin na ang, ang iyong mga salita ay patuloy na mangusap sa bawat isa sa amin. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Purihin ka sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. Patuloy po nating ihanda ang ating mga sarili at tayo po ay tumayong lahat. Sama-sama po nating awitan ang ating Panginoon sa pangunguna ni Sister Jome at ng ating worship team.
Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon. Tunay na napakabuti mo sa buhay namin. Yes, O God. sa amin. Dahil sa kabutihan mo, kami ay binigyan mo ng karapatan na magpartake ng communion together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Join me 
in reading this verse. Luke 22 verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The Holy Communion or the Lord's Supper ay isang banal na pag-alaala at pagpapahayag ng kabutihan ng Panginoong Jesus. By partaking the bread, we remember and proclaim that the body of the Lord Jesus was broken for us. Verse 20, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The Lord Jesus came to establish a new covenant in His blood. Dahil sa kanyang dugo na nabuhos sa bundok ng Kalbaryo, tayo ay tinubos at nilinis sa ating mga kasalanan. When we drink of the cup, we remember that the Lord Jesus shed His blood for our sake, for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray. Tayo po ay manalangin. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us so much, O God. We thank you for this privilege, O God, that once more we will be partaking your bread and cup as brothers and sisters in Christ. Through this, we can proclaim and remember what you have done for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please get ready with your cup and bread. Lord Jesus, we remember your body that was broken for us. And now, let us partake the bread. Lord Jesus, we remember your blood that takes away our sins and cleanses us. Let us partake the cup. Hallelujah! Praise God! Kaluwalhatian, kataas-taasan, ikaw ang Panginoon. Maraming salamat na inibig mo ang isang tulad ko. Maraming salamat na inibig mo ang isang tulad namin. Kaluwalhatian, kataas-taasan, ikaw ang Panginoon.
mo sa aming mga buhay, Panginoon. Patuloy ka naming aawitan at pupurihin magpakailanman. Ngayon naman po ay dadako tayo sa ating pagkakaloob. Patuloy po kaming nagpapasalamat sa tapat na pagkakaloob sa gawain ng Panginoon. Ang hindi nauubos na miyaya po ng Panginoon ang patuloy na maranasan ng bawat isa. Maari pa rin po tayong magkaloob sa pamagitan ng pag-scan ng QR code na nasa inyong mga screen. Maari din po nating bisitahin ang ating website para sa iba pang paraan ng pagkakaloob. Nakasaad po sa salita ng Panginoon sa Lucas 6 verse 38. Ganito po ang sinasabi. Magbigay kayo at kayo'y bibigyan ng Diyos Gustong tahal, siksik, liglig at umaapaw pa ang ibibigay sa inyo. Sapagkat ang panukat na ginagamit ninyo sa iba ay siya rin gagamitin panukat sa inyo. Tayo po ay manalangin. Panginoon, patuloy ka po naming pinasasalamatan, Panginoon, sa lahat ng biyaya na patuloy po ipinagkakaloob sa amin. Dalangin po namin o Diyos sa pagkakaloob namin sa iyo, ikaw po ang patuloy na magbalik ng pagpapala sa iyong mga anak o God. Dalangin po namin na ang aming mga kaloob ay magamit para sa ikalalago ng iyong kaharian dito sa lupa o God. Maraming maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Purihin ka sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. Ngayon naman po, para po sa ating mga announcements, panoorin po natin ang mga susunod na video. I'm glad to inform you that our sermons are now on Spotify. You can now listen to and download our English, Mandarin, and Dialect Sermon podcasts using the Spotify app or Spotify website. Please also be reminded that J333 Soak will take place on 7th October Wednesday at 8pm on Zoom once again. If you would like to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, we welcome you to join us. You are also encouraged to invite your family or friends who have the gift of praying in tongues to lay hands on you and pray for you. More info and the Zoom password can be found via the Grace Helpline. For the details of our announcement, please refer to Grace website. Please don't forget din po to follow Grace Assembly in Facebook and Instagram. And you can also subscribe to our Telegram. This week po, we are blessed to have Dr. Jan Andrews as our speaker. Dr. Jan has been in full-time church leadership since 1987. Though called to serve at UK, Dr. Jan has ministered in almost 14 nations of the world. He has also authored 14 books and currently serves at One Church Gloucester and wider network part-time while also released to teach to a wider chance local context. As a leader, teacher, and author, he has a passion to equip and inspire leaders as well as empower followers of Jesus in effective lifestyle and service. Let us all welcome our speaker, Dr. Jan Andrews. Well, good morning, Gracians. It is my honor and my joy to be ministering the Word of God for you this morning. And also next week, I'm going to be part of your services. What a privilege, what an honor. I would have loved to have been with you in person. But we live in strange and difficult and, uh, well, unprecedented times. But thank God for technology and thank God for his word. His word proclaims that his word is not chained. And even though we are in isolation, even though we may be in some form of restriction, we are so thrilled today that the word of God is not chained, that the spirit of God is not chained that the presence of God is not chained. And wherever we are and wherever we're engaging with this service today, we can be experiencing the fullness of the blessing and the grace and the compassion and the goodness of the Lord. And I am convinced that he is still able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or even imagine according to his power 
that is at work within us. So it's my joy today and next week to be sharing the word of God with you. And I want to be speaking today on the importance of memory. The importance of memory. I've been meditating on a phenomenal psalm in the scripture, Psalm 103. Some of you may know that, maybe some of you it's the first time you've engaged with it. And I would love you uh, at some point to read the whole of that psalm. Now, for the sake of our time on this uh, online service, I'm just going to reference it as we go. But if you could take a moment today to read the whole of Psalm 103, that will really bless you. And some of the things we'll talk about in the next few minutes will connect together. I, I just want to reference the first two verses by way of introduction. And it says these wonderful words, praise the Lord, all my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And for me, it was that phrase that really grabbed me, forget not. In the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of the restriction, in the midst of the last four or five months, which have been, for me and for you, uh, weird and wonderful and challenging and difficult. It was that phrase that the Lord really drew to my attention. He said, John, forget not, forget not. And that came to me over and over again. And the Holy Spirit reminded me of the power of memory. <laughs> because here's the deal. In moments of crisis, we have a tendency to forget, okay? In moments of crisis, we have a tendency for, to forget. That's why we are called to remember. Forgetting requires no effort whatsoever, right? But remembering requires investment and intentionality on my part. And here's what I've discovered, and it's such a simple thought. If we do not remember, we will forget. If we do not remember, we will forget. Recently, I was doing a little bit of business and I was using one of my business cards to pay a bill. Now, in, the, in today's world where we can just tap the machine and, uh, and, and sort of pay online, it had been that long since I had used my PIN code and the transaction was too large to just simply allow me to tap the machine and go. And so I had to remember my pin code and I had a moment and I could not remember it. Now I've got a pretty good memory and yet I could not for the life of me remember that pin code. Uh, and the reason was not because I'm getting old, all right, I'm only 53, but the reason was because I hadn't used the card in that way in such a long time. I had forgotten because I didn't remember. And that's exactly the idea behind the word forget not here. It's the idea that something will slip from our mind if we don't remind ourselves of it. If we do not remember, we will forget. And in a spiritual context, I want to say this to us, when, when we forget stuff that God has done, when we forget his benefits and his goodnesses, we, we jettison something of the fuel <clears throat> of faith out of our lives. And it's really, really important that we understand that the faith journey we are on <clears throat> is as much to do with what has happened to us as what is happening to us and what will happen to us. We must work at remembering because our memory of faith feeds our current faith on our journey. And then the dark moments, the crisis moments, the pandemic moments, when nothing seems to be happening, it's the memory of our faith. It's the memory of what the Lord has done. It's remembering his goodnesses that hold us and speak into our current context. There's a beautiful verse in the scriptures and it says this, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Now, I've heard that verse quoted many, many times, often really uh, wrongly to do with vision in that context, where there's no vision, 
the people cast off restraint. But strictly, it's not about vision in the sense of the next five years or 10 years. It's about being committed to the revelation you have received. So the proverb sort of sits in two parts. The first part says that if there's no revelation or if we have abandoned that revelation or forgotten that revelation, what happens? We cast off restraint. We sort of live recklessly. But then it says this, blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instruction. Now the word translated heeds in the NIV is the Hebrew word shamar. It's a beautiful, beautiful word. And it means to guard, to protect, to watch over. So here's here's what the the, the verse is really saying, that we've got to guard, (coughs) protect, and watch over the revelation that the Lord has given us. Because when that happens, it holds us. We aren't swayed one way or the other but we are encouraged in our journey of faith. And of course, we often think of revelation as something that will happen or something that is happening. But remember, revelation is also to do with what has happened. Revelation is about what I have experienced. Revelation is about me as an eight-year-old boy experiencing the the revelation and truth that Jesus is the Son of God. Well, that happened to me when I was eight years old, but it's still a revelation of truth. And I am expected to guard past revelation as much as I am encouraged to seek new revelation. Hope that makes sense to you. And so Solomon is encouraging me, whatever revelation you've received, heed it, guard it, watch over it and keep it. Why? Because that will stop you living a reckless life in that context. And that brings us beautifully back to the idea of forget not. Here in Psalm 103, the psalmist is encouraging us in the context of our praise and our worship of the Lord, do not forget his benefits. Remember all that he has done because our memory fuels our faith. The memory of what he's done, the memory of who he is, the memory of the journey we have made is as vital as to our journey of faith uh, as receiving fresh manna and fresh revelation on a daily basis. And I don't know about you, that's been a great encouragement to me in the lockdown, or you call it circuit breaker. Here in the UK, uh, we, we've had we've been in lockdown since the 23rd of March, and that has been tremendously difficult for many, many people. And there have been moments when it looks like the every day and even the prospects of tomorrow are shutting down and locking down. And in the moments where today doesn't look like it's working and tomorrow doesn't look like it's possible, what do we do? We revert back to what we know. We remember what the Lord did yesterday. We remember the goodness, the mercy, the grace of the Lord yesterday, which then feeds me today and gives me hope for tomorrow. And that has really been a source of relentless blessing to me as I have been uh, getting through, working through, uh, seeking to thrive in the restriction of uh, the lockdown and the uh, the pandemic that all of us are facing. And so let's go back to this psalm. The psalmist says to us, uh, praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Why is it important to forget not? I'm going to give you three reasons that hope, hopefully will bless you and encourage you. When we forget not, it encourages us to think about three key things. Number one, who he was, he still is. Who he was, he still is. Now, if you've got your Bible open, um, I, I want to refer you to a number of verses in this psalm. Now, if if you can't do that, you can look at these later on. Uh, but verse 8 says this, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. I, some of you will know that as an echo, a direct reference to, to Exodus 34, uh, verse 6, a great declaration of God himself, his nature and his character. And in fact, it could be argued That Psalm 103 in totality is an echo of that. It's absolutely beautiful. Verse 13, as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord 
has compassion on those who fear him. Love that. Verse 17, but from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children. And verse 19, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Now, now what are we learning from those references? Well, it's this, the psalmist was able to speak in the present because of what he knew in the past. Are you with me? The psalmist was able to speak in the present because of what he knew in the past. In other words, let's summarize it in the context of our thought. The Lord is today because he was yesterday. Amen? He's declared to be Aleph and Taw, Alpha and Omega, A and Z, first and last, beginning and end. And one of the big ideas we learn about the Lord is that he is unchanging in his nature. Now, that doesn't mean he can't adapt and change, but what it means is he's unchanging in the sense that he doesn't need to change. He doesn't need to change himself because he is complete and whole and perfect. Therefore, we conclude the God that he was yesterday is the God that he is today, even if the circumstances today challenge that idea. So even if yesterday I was in prosperity and today I'm in difficulty, today he's still the same God he was yesterday. The circumstances may have changed, but he has not. He is good because he was good. He is compassionate because he was compassionate. He is generous because he was generous. He is powerful because he was powerful. And th the psalmist is saying to us, the Lord is because he was. Now, what, what helps connect those two ideas is memory. Remembering his benefits. Who the Lord was yesterday I pull into today regardless of what today is like. And so on the good days, the bad days and the ugly days, what am I doing? I'm remembering who he was in my lived experience and in the revelation of the word of God. And I am bringing that into my everyday experience. And that's why it's important not to forget because the circumstances we're in, the crisis we're in, the moment we're in will always induce memory loss. It will, it will encourage us to forget. And you just have to look at the journeys of God's Old Testament people to show how quickly they forgot stuff when pressure came on them. And we are no different. We forget really quickly. And when we're in a moment of crisis, we can forget that he's good, right? We can forget that he's gracious. We can forget that he's generous. We forget all of that because the, the crisis we're in is encouraging us to forget. So that's why me and you have to remember. That's why we have to go back and remember who he was. And that encourages our faith and reminds us that he still is who he was. Amen. Amen. So why don't you say it with me? This is so, so important. The Lord is because he was. Come on, say that with me. The Lord is because he was. And again, the Lord is because he was. Now that is an issue of faith memory. Remembering yesterday so that we can bring that into today. Here's the second reason we should remember, because when we remember it causes us to understand this. What he did, he can still do. Amen? What he did, he can still do. The opening verses of this psalm are simply magnificent. Verses, uh, well, one to seven really, highlights seven dynamic things he did and does. Uh, look, look at the, the psalmist's words. He says, who forgives all your sins who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with love and compassion, 
who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. And lastly, it says, he made known his ways to Moses and his deeds to his people Israel. Seven distinct actions from the Lord showing us that what he did, he can still do. Amen? That he forgave us in the past and he still forgives. He healed and he still heals. He's generous and he's still generous. Amen? And so we can look at what he has done and remind ourselves that what we've seen him do in the past, <clears throat> we can see him do again. And here's the sort of big idea I want you to remember in this context. The Lord can do it because he has done it. Amen? The Lord can do it right now today because he has done it. We can trust in his ability to work today because we have seen, we remember his ability to work in yesterday. And what an incredible encouragement that is, that many ways our testimony, when we share our story, it is a story of what God has done. Now, when we share that, it is always with the view that what he's done, he's still doing and he's going to do. Amen. But actually, our story is a story of what God has done. If I told you the story of my conversion, or the story of my call, or the story of my first church, or the story of entering ministry, or the story of meeting my wife Dawn, these are all essential parts of my story of faith, but they're all rooted in the past. And so, in the moments when I am worried about today, when it doesn't look like it's working out today, and it doesn't look like God is doing today what I've seen him do yesterday, and here's what I do. I forget not all his benefits. I forget not all his benefits. At the beginning of the pandemic, at the beginning of the lockdown, I should say, in the United Kingdom, which happened on the 23rd of March, I was in the book of Isaiah as part of my devotions, and in Isaiah chapter 3, I was reading that chapter on the 18th of March. So just a few days before the lockdown happened for real in the United Kingdom. And the Lord spoke to me from that passage. And in verse 10, it says this, Tell the righteous it will be well with them and they will eat of the fruit of their deeds. Now, I can share the story with you now because, because we've worked through it, but but my, my life essentially is translocal. I, I make my living by traveling, by teaching, by going from church to church. I'm rooted in a local church here, which I serve. But, but the, the majority of my, my income is through travel. Well, when the pandemic, uh, the pandemic hit and the lockdown happened, my goodness, it was like my calendar went into free fall. But here's what the Lord said to me. Tell the righteous. In other words, he was speaking to me. John, I am telling you, that all will be well with you. You will eat of the fruit of your deeds. And I've held on to that. But you know, in the moments, in the days, in the last five, six months, where I thought, oh Lord, it's getting a bit tight. Oh Lord, uh, are you there? In those moments, what have I done? I have reminded myself of two things. What he said, uh, I'll take care of you, Isaiah 3.10. But also, I've looked beyond that into the moment after moment after moment after moment after moment when the Lord provided, when the Lord was generous, when ravens uh, almost literally fed us out of the sky, when it looked like we didn't know where the next penny was coming from and God took care of us. Uh, I, I, one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 37, I was young and now I am old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. And that has been my testimony. That's that's true. Up to this point, that is absolutely true. I have never seen the righteous forsaken and I have never seen the seed of the righteous begging for bread. And I've never had to beg for bread myself. But when you're in the crisis, when, when work is drying up, when, when it looks like the world is shutting down on you, it is easy to forget what he has done. 
And that's when we really, 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 really need to remember the Lord can do it because he's done it. Come on, say it with me. The Lord can do it because he has done it. Say it again. The Lord can do it because he has done it. Once more, come on. The Lord can do it because he has done it. Love that. I love that. And so here's the third area why we're encouraged from the psalm, the psalm 103, to remember or to forget not. Because thirdly, what he promised, he will perform. Come on now. What he promised, he will perform. Look at these amazing words, verses 17 and 18 of the psalm. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. And his righteousness with their children's children and with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. Look at the language from everlasting to everlasting. His righteousness with your children's children. Uh, Last year I became a grandfather and Abigail is our first grandchild, first granddaughter. She's absolutely beautiful. Born last December 2019 beautiful child. And she literally represents this to me. She's my children's children. She's my daughter's child. I'm now thinking in a a much more natural generational way. And I am speaking the promises of God, not only over my own life and the uh, life of my wife, but over my children and now over my children's children. Why? Because I have seen the Lord perform his promises in the past. And therefore, because I have seen him perform those promises in the past, I am confident he can and he will perform those promises in the future. For me, for for the words he's spoken over my life, for the words he's spoken over my family, for the words he's spoken in the context of ministry and uh, and, and the things he wants us to do. And now for the life of my children's children. Uh, and that is the same for me and you. The Lord is able to do it because he is the everlasting God. He's the all powerful God. He's the first and last God. He is able to do because of who he is and his word that he has spoken, he will perform it. Say, John, it doesn't look like it right now. He will perform it. It doesn't look possible. He will perform it. It looks like everything is against me. He will perform it. If he has promised it, he will do it. We've got to remember this. The promise he has made, he has the power to keep and he will keep. He doesn't use words lightly. He doesn't waffle. He doesn't just say stuff. He says things that he intends to do. And he says things that he has the power to do in your life and in my life. The Lord will perform it because he has promised it. Come on, will you say it with me again? The Lord will perform it because he has promised it. Say it again. The Lord will perform it because he has promised it. Will you do it once more for me? The Lord will perform it. Because he has promised it. That's why we should not forget his benefits. That's why we must remember and rehearse those benefits. And so as I draw this to a close, I want to give you some practical tips of how not to forget. All right. You won't have a pin code moment like I did. Uh, Practical tips on how not to forget. Number one, remember. Uh, So John, that's not a practical tip. Yes, it is. Remember. Some of you have been given words from God that you've forgotten. There's dust on those words. You've you've pushed those words away because the current circumstances seem impossible. Remember them. Remember them. Remember them. Uh, And once you remember them, here's what I want you to do. Record them. Now, you may have already recorded them and stuffed them away somewhere. Get them out. Record them on your phone. Uh, Put them on your tablet. Stick them on a poster on the wall. There's one behind me that says that that my history does not determine my destiny. That's not just a cool poster. That's my life experience. 
my, my upbringing and my background said I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. But God made me a promise that my history would never determine my destiny. And so that's on the wall. I remember that every day. Every day I look at that, I'm reminded of that promise. I have that all around my office. Things that help me to remember. And the reason I'm helped to remember is because I've recorded them. Record them, write them down, stick them on a, on a poster if it helps you. Put them somewhere that will help you to remember. Thirdly, don't just remember and record, rehearse. Rehearse. Speak out the word of God. Speak it out over your life. Speak out the promises. Speak out the goodnesses. Tell your story and keep telling your story. Never get tired of telling people, telling yourself, telling your family how good the Lord has been and what he has done in your life. And lastly, rejoice, 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 celebrate. Oh, it may not look like it's happening today. It may not look like it's possible, but rejoice in the God who was and therefore he is, in the God who did it and therefore he can do it, in the God who promised it and therefore he can perform it. So Gracians, let me remind you of these incredible uh, and powerful ideas. When we remember, we don't forget. <laughs> when we remember, we fuel our faith with the revelation we have already received that speaks into the context of our current circumstances. We, when we remember, we stand on the truths that remind us who he was, he still is. What he did, he can still do. And what he promised, he can and he will perform. And so right now as I pray, I want you to open up your heart and I want you to open up your life and be ready to respond right now to the goodness and the grace of God. Because he wants us to remember because there is power in remembering his goodness. Praise the Lord, O my soul, the psalmist said, and forget not all his benefits. So Lord, right now, I pray for my friends in Grace Church, in Singapore, and in the communities that they touch all over the world. And Lord Jesus, I pray that the power of memory will return. I pray that Lord, we will be men and women, boys and girls, who do not forget that we will be men and women who remember the goodness of the Lord, who remember that he heals all our diseases, who remember that he has forgiven all of our sins, that Lord, we will be reminded today of the goodness of God, that as families, we will look back, as individuals, we will look back, that we will allow the memory of our faith journey to become the fuel of a revelation that we hold on to and heed and watch over and protect. Forgive us, Lord, for forgetting. Forgive us for the moments we have forgotten your goodness and your greatness because we have not remembered. And Lord, we make a decision today that we will remember, we will record, we will rehearse, and we will rejoice. And so, Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that you will bless their hearts and their minds and with fresh revelation and love and goodness and mercy and grace, they will be men and women who live in the importance and power of memory and walk in the faith that that brings to the circumstances they are in. And so, my brothers and sisters in Singapore, may the Lord bless you and may he keep you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. In Jesus' name, God bless you all. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. John Andrews, for that powerful message. Church, let us thank God for the gift of memory that he has given to us as believers in Christ. Let us remember what the Lord has done and let us not forget all His benefits. When we remember, we strengthen our faith with God's revelation, allowing it to speak into our lives and to our situation. And so, we choose to believe 
and we declare who God was. He still is what God did. He can still do what God promised. He will perform. Let us pray. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise the Lord and remember all your benefits. Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord God, for all the good things that you have done into our lives, O God. Help us to remember who you are, what you did, and all the wonderful promise that you in store for us. Help us to remember those things so that our faith will be strengthened, O God, and our walk with you will be strengthened as well. Thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We are forever grateful to you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. Allow me to bless you before you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. With that, you may now go, people of the Lord, and I will see you next week. We've come together as one to sing your praise, Jesus we desire. Seek your face, hearts united, undivided, our praise is breaking through. God, we can see that you're moving, spirit come, overflowing. With our hearts open now, oh Lord, we're ready now, your light is breaking through. It's a new day dawning, we're holding on to you. We believe we're moving forward, heaven sighted. We will place our hope and trust in.